Coming up on Fresh Dev, part one of WordPress plugin development. That's right. We'll start with the fundamentals like how to name your plugin, where to develop it, and where to host it. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Fresh Dev. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Scott. Scott, it's always a pleasure to see you both battling some allergies today. I've said that (laughs) 15 times throughout all the shows today. It's crazy. Uh, Fresh Dev is the show where we take those issues that you have as a young entrepreneurial, brand new developer, uh, designer, CSS, HTML, JavaScript, some PHP stuff, WordPress stuff, make it a little bit easier for you. That's right. right. Or at least we hope that (laughs) that we are. Uh, if you want to go ahead and join us uh, in the conversation, go ahead and hit subscribe on YouTube. We want to have over a thousand fans, so go ahead and do that. Check us out, slocumstudio.com slash subscribe. Uh, join our mailing list and we'll let you know when all this awesome stuff comes out. Today we're introducing a new series, uh, how to develop your very first WordPress plugin. That's right. Uh, it's going to be a multi-part uh, show uh, mm-hmm. or, or se- series of shows, um, hoping to get you off the ground with your brand new WordPress plugin. Yeah, we'll start with some basics and absolutely kind of move on from there. Uh, so, Scott, you've outlined uh, sort of what you've put together here as your top picks for uh, creating a plugin. First one, what's your idea? You got to have that idea, right? You mm-hmm. gotta you gotta come up with an idea, then. I think you got to do some research on that too. You know, you want to make sure that nobody else has already implemented an idea that's, you know, very similar to yours. Um, so do some research, do a Google search, search into WordPress plugins repository, um, some of the other repositories out there, the commercial, you know, repositories, and make sure that your idea isn't already uh, taken. Right. And, and we do that because WordPress is driven by the community. It's powered by the community. Uh, why do you want to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to? And hey, guess what? This is all, if, as long as it's on WordPress.org, this is an open source movement here, right? So I've got an idea for whatever, a, a SEO plugin. Guess what? <laughs> How there's many like, of those are there? Right, there's five or six <laughs> like real top-notch ones. You really want to contribute to that? You can contact those authors and those developers and be part of that plugin success. Exactly. Um, unless your idea is totally unique or you just say you know what hands down such and such is doing it wrong or another thing that they can look at is hey this this project hasn't been updated in over a year yes that's very true right a lot of plugins out there like that we come across that a lot Mm -hmm. Uh, so get your idea do a little bit of research google or wordpress.org ask around ask around on the twitters uh on the facebooks the google pluses and find out hey what, what should i be developing you bring us into our next question uh, of where to develop. Yeah, that's right. right. Um, go ahead and tell us where you think the three uh, major options are. Well, I think, uh, you know, we have our local host environment, which mm-hmm. actually we talked about that last mm-hmm. week. Yep. Um, we also talked about remote hosts or like a development server, a staging server, or something like that. Uh, and then also there's version control software, <coughs> something like GitHub, Bitbucket, um, where you can actually manage each version of your source code, and they provide free um, repositories for you to upload your code, you know, depending on your needs. Yeah, and you know, GitHub's a great place to, uh, for those that don't know this, uh, it's a great, almost like a social network for developers, is, right? Yeah, you're you're yeah. uploading your code, everyone can see it if you give them access to it, people can contribute, they can comment, they can start, they can like it, all this fun stuff. Uh, it's a great place to kind of just put yourself out there and get other people to contribute. Um, Why is this important? Why is it important to pick a place to develop? Um, My natural thoughts are not, I'm not a developer, but hey, if I'm an artist, I I need my canvas. Like I need, where am I going to be working from today? Like when I'm crafting a new blog post for my my blog or the studio's blog, like where am I working from today? A coffee shop? Do I need that kind of like I just need people around me. I need noises. I need coffee. <laughs> uh, or am I gonna, you know, relax and and write something outside, just sitting out on a park bench or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, I think it's very similar to where you're gonna develop, right? Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, it might be important to note you might use all three of these during your process, right? Um, you know, you might develop locally, send it to GitHub. 
uh, and then pull that to your remote host for testing. Right. Um, you know, you can also test on local host too, but right. you know, different options are out there. For right. You, so. And I, and I think we talked about that in our local host, uh, um, episode from last week where, Hey, look, you still, if you're, if you're pushing out to a remote host, you got to FTP it up. You got to sync it. You got to make sure it went up there. Then you got to go and hit refresh. Did it work? Yeah. You, save, you know, there's some time involved with that. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing with GitHub. I'm, you know, you know that better than I do, but you got to check out and do all this stuff. That's it's right. like, yeah, hey, you know, all, all this stuff I have to do overhead wise. Like if I'm just r- developing local host, it's just right here. I, I'm just watching it all right here. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that other stuff. Exactly. As soon as you make a change, you just refresh the browser. You don't have to move any files or anything. And, you know, you, right. you see a changes right then and there. Yeah. So uh, so there is a method to that madness. So where are you going to develop? Where are you going to start this this new adventure? Um, and then you bring it on to naming your plugin. That's right. Yep. So you figured all, you know, you research your idea, you have your development environment set up. Uh, now you need to name your plugin. Mm. You probably want to name it something unique and usually something that describes your plugin. So if it's a weather plugin, you might want to include the word weather. Uh, SEO plugin might want to include the word SEO. Um, some, you know, something to kind of describe it and also unique so that way people can find it, mm. you know, based on however you promote it. Yeah. And that probably goes back to the research stuff that you talked about. Like, Agreed. Hey, I mean, if there's uh, six, you know, already SEO plugins out there using SEO, you know, do I use the same thing because I want people to, I want to show up in those search results? Um, you know, or am I just going to come out with something totally unique, uh, so that people know that it's me, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then how important it is to describe the plugin, right? And and how what does it actually do? Yeah, that's definitely important. Yeah, screenshots. Yep. How to videos, anything Frequently like frequently asked questions right. that might come up. Yeah. Right. And I think with dot org, you can do stuff with like a banner on their page and all this stuff. You can, yep. yeah. And you can include those screenshots, like you mentioned. Uh, there's a change log for changes you may have made. Mm. Stuff like that. And so. some of the stuff are requirements, right? Like you need to have certain stuff for like dot org if you had it the plugin included there. Yeah, that's correct. Um, you only need a few things. I, I think like your plugin name is ultimately what's required. Um, but you want to include more than just that. You want to include the screenshots if you can. Um, you want to include those development notes, frequently asked questions. How do they install it? How do they go about activating any special functionality? Uh, because otherwise your users will have to figure that out for themselves. And you might right. run into a roadblock right. you know, or two. Something else that you that they might not be thinking, or you as a developer, brand new developer, might not be thinking about is, hey, once this plugin is done, where is it going to live, right? So what that ultimately means is, what kind of license do I need to get, right? Very true. Uh, or what license do I do I publish this, this code under? Um, ultimately, if you're going to the .org where everybody can find you, you have to go GPL. You do. Right. 2.0 or later. Yep. Um, if not, what, what are your other options? Like if you're going to do a privately hosted plugin or something like that, or you're going to sell something, mm-hmm. uh, what are the other options folks have? Uh, it really depends on the way that you want to go about it, but you can do a creative commons, uh, you know, with attribution, without attribution, depending on what you write. Um, you could claim copyright in that, you know, you created the code, you want to sell it for a premium price. You can claim com- copyright on that. You can honestly use any you know, license of your choosing, uh, mm-hmm. to be honest, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's up to you, but definitely, as you said, if you're in uh, wordpress.org, it has to be GPL 2.0 or later, or they won't even accept your submission. So mm-hmm. you do want to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and speaking of that, so now if we're, if you say, you know what, I got my great idea, I got the name, I know where I'm going to start to launch this baby. Um, I know I, I'm going to go to .org first. What are the suggestions that, that you have for folks um, that are about to launch on this endeavor? All right. Well, WordPress puts together a great list of coding standards, and you'll want to follow that. You want to make sure that your code is fairly consistent with everybody else's code, especially if it's on .org. Um, that way, you can collaborate with other users, and they can go in and take a look at your code. They can easily understand it, where you might have placed your functions and whatnot. Um, and, and that's available on the WordPress codex. We can provide a reference for that below the video. Uh, and it just, you know, helps overall with your development. They, I think the way that they've come up with these standards, it helps to organize your code and, and, and just makes it, you know, much more efficient. Mm. Um, also kind of on that note, uh, this is, I believe part of the coding standards, you'll want to prefix your functions, uh, 
what that means is... Thank you, Scott. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> if uh, you have a, uh, an SEO plugin, um, you just create a function called like get SEO results, whatever that function might do. Um, problem could occur if another SEO plugin has that same function name, right? So now you have two functions. They're both uh, declared with the same name. An error is definitely going to be generated. Mm. So you'd probably want to prefix that and basically put a couple of initials before your function call, uh, and that way you won't run into any of those conflicts. Yeah, that's a great point, uh, especially if this is your first time diving into this stuff is, hey, somebody could impl uh, install multiple plugins, hundreds, thousands, if they were that crazy. <laughs> um, you install one plugin, then they install your plugin, and then all of a sudden if there's same function calls, names, titles, whatever, uh, if they're not properly prefixed, there's going to be a collision, if you will. That's right. And all the plugins, you know, they're all running at the same time. Everything, WordPress core, everything's running at the same time. So you have a chance of those collisions. The The only uh, way kind of around that um, would be to uh, code your plugin in a class file. Mm -hmm. Basically, you'd create a PHP class and then any functionality within that class can still be utilized by WordPress, but you don't have to prefix your function call. Is that something that's recommended or... I think so, yeah. yeah. I That's what I usually do during okay. my day. And uh, I think it's just a good idea to kind of organize your code. And it goes, um, brings up the point of kind of object-oriented programming, uh, which I think is, you know, a, a new s standard, we can call it, I guess, um, of programming. And, and I do think it's recommended. So. Very good. Uh, you're starting to get a little crazy now, and you're saying optimize your database calls. Uh, what's that about? Should people already be thinking about that right out of the gate? Is that uh, something good that they should be doing? That's a good question. Um, maybe not necessarily right out of the gate, but it depends on, I guess, what your plugin might do. You want to optimize your database calls. Uh, you don't want to have too many requests trying to fetch data, and especially writing data because that's usually more taxing on the database. Um, what that means as well is WordPress provides functionality for you to make those calls. So instead of writing your own SQL queries, use what WordPress has mm. built in. And that way it's already optimized, it's sanitized, mm -hmm. meaning no SQL injections, you know, a lot of stuff to worry about here. And that's probably more advanced. We can maybe have an episode on that. But That'll be at like episode 17 or something yeah, like that definitely. when we finally get to that. But now, you, is that the same thing as using WP uh, WordPress's APIs so you're not doing the same thing? Uh, uh, similar, yeah. Um, I guess optimizing the database calls is a little different than using the APIs, but um, using their APIs, if they have functionality that's already built, use those functions instead of creating your own. It gotcha. does involve database queries though as well. Um, so they're, they're almost one and the same, but there mm -hmm. are some subtle differences, I think. Gotcha, because again, we, we always go back to why reinvent the wheel? Right. I mean, that's right. A lot of folks getting into WordPress, they're not f like if there are developers, hardcore developers out there, they've been used to building stuff on their own. So they don't care. Like they're like, I'm just going to go and code all this. They're not exposed to this world of plugins that, that we have. Right. Yeah. So then it's like, oh, I can actually search for something that somebody already did. Wow. That's kind of new. Yeah. Right. And uh, why reinvent the wheel? Same thing when you're actually in there coding stuff start leveraging the stuff that WordPress already builds in. And your last suggestion here is eliminate any PHP errors in your plugin. Um, kind of makes sense to me. Make sure that you don't have any errors right? yeah, as, exactly. we, as we produce this. Um, and and you'll, you'll see, honestly, if you um, go to our last episode uh, when we talked about WP config, mm. uh, um, there's actually, to be honest, some plugins on the repository that have some errors. Uh, so they may not have done that error checking, but it helps <coughs> optimize and make your code more efficient. Um, and, and it's just overall a good idea because you don't want any of those warnings or mm. errors filling up the server logs. You right. Know? And another great episode that we did, I, uh, you did with Dan, I believe, is with the developer tools, right? The yes. developer plugin tool. We actually talked about that as well in the last episodes, um, last few episodes. Great plugin to have installed while you start this this new plugin. Definitely. Um, so I think that's it, Scott. I think that's episode one. Yeah. Uh, zero, episode zero perhaps, <laughs> uh, of before you start getting into your plugin. These are all the thoughts that you should have uh, in your mind. Uh, you know, research the idea first. Make sure you're not reinventing the wheel. You know, where are you going to start to craft and, and do this art, as I like to call it, uh, and then naming it, describing it, um, and then starting to get the, the fundamentals together before you start going so that you're putting out a lean, mean 
coding machine That's right. uh, of plugins. So if you like what we have to say and you have any questions, comments, or what you want to see on the next uh, series of this episode, shoot us some uh, questions in the comments. We'll try to get them into the second episode of this plugin development tutorial. Uh, SlocumStudio.com. Uh, we just launched a new real estate theme. That's right. Developed by this guy over here doing all sorts <laughs> of stuff. We actually built our own plugin for that, uh, for real estate listings. Check it out. Uh, it's a modern real estate just responsive theme. Uh, if you need any help with WordPress stuff, let us know. Give us a contact uh, and we'll be sure to help you out. Thanks, guys. Thanks.